In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, and that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins. For the grace, make this time a prayer fruitful, my Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me. With your permission, Lord Jesus, exposed here before us in the Blessed Sacrament, we are well along in the season of Easter, and in this meditation we can look forward to the culmination of Easter, which takes place on Pentecost, the descent of the Holy Spirit. And we know that the liturgy is never just a kind of commemoration. It's not just a historical anniversary of an event that took place in the past. Like a couple years ago, they had the 400th anniversary of the founding of Plymouth. The liturgy is not like that, like the 2000th anniversary of Pentecost or something like this. Rather, we know that the liturgy makes present in a real but a mysterious way the power of the same mystery, the power of the mystery being commemorated, celebrated. This happens above all, of course, at Mass. Right? Every Mass is the entire Paschal mystery. At every Mass we have our Lord offering himself on Holy Thursday, our Lord suffering and offering himself on the cross. We have the resurrection. We have our Lord in heaven as well. Ascension. And so to look forward to the Feast of Pentecost is to really believe and to look forward and prepare for a new coming of the Holy Spirit that in a certain way on that feast, the Holy Spirit descends in the church once again, descends into our lives once again. It's just a good question. Do we want to be ready for the Holy Spirit? Are we open to him or not? And so, Lord, in your presence, we can reflect on this, how to be, how to be more open, more conscious of the working of the Holy Spirit. And there's a great topic for the month of May, and Our Lady's month, Our Lady tells us the secret. She says, do whatever he tells you. The wedding feast of Cana, she tells the servants after our Lord seems to say no to her request to help them, they have no wine. Our Lady tells our Lord the problem, they have no wine. Our Lord says, what do you have to do with me, woman? My hour has not yet come. Our Lady insists on confidence in him, and she says, do whatever he tells you. Well, that's a great summary of how we should relate to the Holy Spirit. Docility. It is our Lord's own attitude towards the Father. I only do what pleases him. Docility, obedience. And what God wants us to do, Lord, what you want us to do, comes through the Holy Spirit. And so to foster our relationship with the Holy Spirit is to foster Mary's attitude, right? Do whatever he tells you, be it done unto me according to your word. A kind of essential attitude of wanting God's will, accepting God's will, seconding God's will. And all of that presupposes listening for it. Right? The word docility really means teachable. To be docile is to be teachable, to be a good student. And to be teachable is to know how to listen, right? to be attentive, to be receptive. And so that's a good question. Uh, Lord, am I set too much on my own will? on my own judgment, that the opposite of docility is obduracy, 
or stubbornness, as we call it in more common English. And am I stubborn? Do I insist on my own way, my own view of things? Or am I open to learning, right? learning from God? I'm often struck by how much failure is built into the sport of baseball. Right? If you have just three hits in 10 at-bats, you're a really good hitter. It's a really good batting average. And so seven times you fail to get a hit. Maybe you have a walk, and that's important. But a good batter could fail, right, seven out of 10 times and still be a very good batter. And the same thing is happening now with basketball, right? It's like uh, this forward for the Celtics, Grant Williams, just made seven out of 19, I think. Seven out of 19 three-pointers. And everyone is super excited about it, which is very good. I couldn't do that in five years just with no one guarding me. But anyway, um, couldn't even reach the rim probably. <laughs> But still, it's like 39%, right? I mean, there's 60% misses. And what does that have to do with the Holy Spirit? Well, I think our spiritual life is something like that, that the Holy Spirit is constantly passing us the ball, right? Constantly throwing us pitches. And to be good at the spiritual life isn't to bat, this is just my opinion, but since it's so constant, it's not to bat 600 or to bat 800 or to be a 90% free throw shooter. It's probably something more like batting 300 right? or shooting 40% from the, from the three-point line because there's so many opportunities. And so it's a good question. You know, what is my, what is my batting percentage when it comes to the pitches that the Holy Spirit is throwing my way? And how can I increase it? How can I be a little bit more attentive, a little bit more reactive, greater quickness in corresponding to the motions of the Holy Spirit? Or a little bit less complacent in letting inspiration slip by? And where do we start? Well, Lord, perhaps I can start with some obvious thing that I know that you want me to work on, that I've thought about working on for a while, and I'm just dragging my feet. And whatever that is, I should have a difficult conversation with someone, I should work on this relationship, I should waste less time at work or on my phone, I should pray the rosary more regularly, especially in this month of May. And whatever that kind of obvious thing is that has been there, you know, the back of our head, the Holy Spirit just scratching me away. Yeah, you should probably do this, you should probably do this. Well, that's a good place to start. The thing we're procrastinating and we know is good for us and that God probably wants and wants to help us to do. Sister Faustina, Saint Faustina, encourages us to open up to the Holy Spirit my Jesus, it is truly easy to become holy. It just takes a little goodwill. And if he finds this minimum of goodwill in a soul, he quickly gives himself to her. And nothing can stop him, neither our faults nor our falls, absolutely nothing. Jesus hurries to help that soul. And if the soul is faithful to this grace from God, she can in a short time reach the highest level of holiness that a created being can attain here below. That amazing words from a great saint. Sometimes we think, well, wow, holiness is going to, it's like lifetime achievement award. But if we open ourselves to God and we have the goodwill to say, I'm not going to refuse God the things he asks of me when they're clear, and I'm going to try to increase that batting average 5%, 10%. But if we let God in with a little crack, well, he's God, right? He's all powerful. The Holy Spirit is all powerful and he's our sanctifier. 
who knows how quickly we could grow in, in, in holiness. If the soul is faithful to this grace from God, she can in a short time reach the highest level of holiness that a created being can attain here below. God is very generous and does not refuse his grace to anyone. He gives even more than we ask for. The shortest road is faithfulness to the inspirations of the Holy Spirit. It's the shortest road to holiness and therefore happiness and therefore heaven is faithfulness to the inspirations of the Holy Spirit. Right, a greater docility, a greater, a greater attentiveness. The Athanasian Creed is very beautiful. It goes through each person of the Trinity and their different attributes. And one of the things it stresses is the omnipotence of God. It says in Latin, it says, omnipotens Deus, omnipotens filius, omnipotens spiritus sanctus. The Father is all-powerful. The Son is all-powerful. The Holy Spirit is all-powerful. And that's a great act of faith, Lord. I believe in your power. And I don't believe in your power in an abstract way, like, oh, God can do all things. He can create the universe, which he did. He can give himself in the Eucharist, his bread, which he does. And that's, very, that's concrete enough. But I also believe in it in a very concrete way that he can change my life. He can help me with my prayer life. Lord, send forth your spirit and you shall renew the face of the earth. The Holy Spirit is all powerful. Omnipotent Spiritus Sanctus. But do I believe that? And what does believing that look like? Well, it looks something like do whatever he tells you. Figure out the thing that God wants us to work on, the next step, and then go for it. And then be, pay attention to the small motions of the Holy Spirit. God is very generous, St. Faustina told us, and he does not refuse his grace to anyone. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorns or figs from thistles? So every sound tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears evil fruit. A sound tree cannot bear evil fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and, throw them, and thrown into the fire. Thus, you will know them by their fruits. Right? You will know them by their fruits, and you will be known by your fruits. We will be known by our fruits. And this passage is complemented by St. Paul who talks about the fruits of the Holy Spirit and the works of the flesh, right, a kind of contrast in Galatians. And so we can ask, you know, how do I know? Right? How will I know if I'm docile to the Holy Spirit? How will I know if the Holy Spirit is working within me? Well, by these fruits, right? What are the fruits of my life? What are the fruits of my prayer, my relationships? And so writing to the Galatians, Paul kind of spells this out. By your fruits, you will know them. But I say, walk by the Spirit and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you would. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are plain, immorality, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, selfishness, dissension, party spirit, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and the like. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit, by contrast, you will know them by their fruits. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. 
And this is a good translation because it preserves a kind of strange grammar. Right? St. Paul says the fruit of the Spirit. And then he goes on to list like seven or eight things. The fruit of the Spirit is love. But then he keeps going, right? So how come love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. So if there's so many, how come fruit is not plural? Fruits. And scripture commentators say, well, it's because really there should be a semicolon after love, right? The fruit of the Spirit is love, charity. And the manifestations of charity, or the kind of ingredients of charity, are those other fruits, right? Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And so, Lord, when I look at my life, in addition to what do you want me to do, do whatever he tells you, what do you want me to work on, I also have to look at, well, what are the fruits of a bad spirit, right? What is against the Holy Spirit in me? The works of the flesh, immorality, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, selfishness, dissension, party spirit, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and the like. By your fruits you will know them. What are your inspirations, Lord? Where do we receive them? And we have to be careful. I think, you know, sometimes people get too, like, spiritualistic about this. They can border on the superstitious. Luckily, knock on wood, I'm not superstitious. But, um, <laughs> so people can kind of, like, start looking around and say, oh, is that a sign? Is this a sign? Right? And they'll come and say, oh, Father, you know, I saw, I saw a dove on a juniper tree in my mother-in-law's wife is, my mother-in-law's name is June, and so am I supposed to talk to her about confession of the Holy Spirit or something? No, you need to, like, go see a psychiatrist, um, you know, calm down. Um, and so, you know, we have to be careful not to be kind of um, too spiritualistic, right, about signs of the Holy Spirit. And what does God want you to do? Well, most of it is live your life. Right, what the tradition calls the duties of your state in life. The Holy Spirit wants you to be where you are right now, doing what you're doing, taking care of the people in your life, right, living your responsibilities as, as a man, a Christian in the middle of the world, taking care of your family, being a good friend, being a good worker, being a good professional. People would come... Um, from all over Europe, but especially from all over France, to talk to the cure of ours, St. John Marie Vianney. And sometimes they'd be disappointed because you'd have these like spiritualistic, pietistic women who would travel for days, right, to get to ours. And they'd wait in line and it was, you know, hot and, and a tough, tough journey. And they'd have their, you know, five or 10 minutes with, with uh, the saint in the confessional and they'd ask him, Father, what, you know, what does God want me to do? And they were very kind of, you know, ethereal in their spiritual life. And they were expecting some strange answer of pilgrimage to the Holy Land or don't sleep ever again, pray all night. And he would say, uh, God wants you to go back home and be a good wife and be a good mother. And, you know, don't forget to scrub the floor on Thursdays, right? And they'd be like, oh, What? And he was just telling them, right? he couldn't lie, right? This is your life, right? And do it with love and have a prayer life, but do what you have to do, right? Do you, be you, but with more love. St. Josemaria was asked once, he said, he was asked, Father, what would you do if you knew you only had a few days to live, right? If you knew you only had like three or four days to live, and St. Josemaria said, I would do the same things, but with more love. Because right? he was already doing, he was already convinced that he was doing what God wanted. His daily prayer life, his daily work, his daily family life. Where else, Lord, do we get these inspirations of the Holy Spirit? Spiritual direction. 
at the advice we receive in spiritual direction, the advice we receive in confession, that these are ordinary channels for God's will for us, unless they're way off or we think they're immoral um, or rationally imprudent, they're good guides and they're opportunities to be obedient, to be humble, to accept the advice of another. Where else do we receive, Lord, the inspirations of the Holy Spirit? In our prayer life, we end these times of meditation with gratitude. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations. And are we going to have clear resolutions, affections, and inspirations in every time of prayer? Maybe not, but there's always something. There's always something. Resolutions are for our will. I should do this. I should avoid that. I should make this resolution, right? A, a new rule. I resolve that this will be the way things go from now on. I hereby resolve that this is the way I'm going to act. Affections are for the heart. I should feel or try to feel this way about this person or that way about this other thing. Lights are inspirations. Inspirations are lights for our intellect. And if we're attentive in prayer, above all, if we pray, if we cut out time each day to look at God, let him look at us, to take his words to our prayer slowly, apply them to our life, well, we're going to get resolutions, affections, and some inspiration, right? New insights, lights for our intellect. But for that, we have to pray. And so, so again, we go back to docility, right? The first thing of docility is to be teachable. And to be teachable is to learn how to listen, right? To listen for God's will. That happens in our prayer. Ideas we get from our spiritual reading, ideas we get from preaching, from means of formation. And all those are ordinary channels, right? We're not looking for extraordinary things ordinary channels of God's will for us, our state in life, advice we receive in confession, spiritual direction, lights, resolutions, affections we get in our prayer life. Come Holy Spirit, St. Josemaria prays, and we can use this for our own prayer. Come, O Holy Spirit, enlighten my understanding to know your commands. Strengthen my heart against the wiles of the enemy. Inflame my will. I have heard your voice, and I don't want to harden my heart to resisting by saying later, tomorrow, nun cepi, now I begin, now, lest there be no tomorrow for me. O spirit of truth and wisdom, spirit of understanding and counsel, Spirit of joy and peace, I want what you want. I want it because you want it. I want it as you want it. I want it, I want it when you want it. Do whatever he tells you, that advice from Our Lady. And we can go to her. She's spouse of the Holy Spirit. And the gospel describes the, the incarnation of our Lord in that moment when Our Lady says yes to God. The gospel says the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And she's overshadowed by the Holy Spirit, overwhelmed. And so being spouse, she surrenders to God. And she surrenders herself, body and soul, to God. And this is a great image for us, right? To let ourselves be overshadowed by God. What is God's mind for me? What is God's plan for me? What is God's will for me. And that entails at certain times, right, giving up our own, right, giving up our own willfulness, giving up our own lights, right, giving up our own preferences so that God can take over, right, to be overshadowed, overwhelmed by the Holy Spirit. I want what you want. I want it because you want it. I want it as you want it. I want it when you want it. Our Lady, Spouse of the Holy Spirit, pray for us. Help us to have this basic attitude, docility, to increase our spiritual batting average, to respond more readily and to be more attentive 
to the opportunities God is giving us, the motions of the Holy Spirit, to love. The fruit of the Spirit is love. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations which you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect, my Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me.